In this video, I'd like to quickly discuss some common skin infections and grappling caused by the germ Staphylococcus aureus. Here's a photograph of Staphylococcus aureus under the microscope. The word staph comes from the Greek word staphyli, which means grape. And you can see that Staph aureus is arranged as clusters of grapes. Approximately 20 to 30 percent of all healthy people worldwide are colonized with Staph aureus on the body, primarily in the nose and other body parts. However, when it penetrates the integrity of the skin, various infections can develop. Here is a photograph of bacterial cellulitis. Notice the hot, red, tender, swollen lesion right above the ankle. If it's severe, the patient can sometimes develop chills and fever. Here is another manifestation, bacterial folliculitis due to Staph aureus. Notice the inflamed hair follicles. They are red and inflamed. Here is another manifestation of a Staphylococcus skin infection. This is an abscess, which is a localized collection of pus. The pus contains tissue, bacteria, and white blood cells. Another presentation of a Staphylococcus skin infection is impetigo. Notice the red lesion with honey-crusted lesions over it. If you believe you've developed a staph infection, it's important to see your doctor as soon as possible. Treatment may include washing with warm water and soap two to three times a day. Depending upon physician preference, he or she may elect to prescribe topical Bactroban, B-A-C-T-R-O-B-A-N, two to three times a day. But often these infections require systemic oral antibiotics, including possibly cephalexin, which is named Keflex in the United States, amoxiclav, otherwise known as Augmentin in the United States, a sulfur-based antibiotic, common name is Bactrim in the U.S., clindamycin, and doxycycline can be used if the patient is over 8 years old. The driving factor in deciding which antibiotic to use are the local sensitivities of staph infections in the local community. Preventing staph infections is extremely important, which includes showering as soon as possible after training. I would also strongly recommend, if you train regularly, take a look at your entire skin from head to toe, front, back, and sides in a mirror every day or every other day to see if you notice any new lesions that are developing that would need attention.